Hey guys, we're back. Alex Subhuman here with United Pop Melbourne. Today we're going to be doing some more sound design. I'm going to be showing you some of my strange and hopefully wonderful lead slash bass lead sounds. We're going to be making a little bit of naughtiness that sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, so today it's weird bass lead line time. Let's start off with a new instance of Vital. I like the green one. For some reason, it makes me feel happy inside, like a nice tasty lime. First things first, let's chuck on basic shapes. And the first shape we're going to use is a sawtooth. We're going to actually start with something called a super saw. A super saw, or a super any waveform, is basically one version of the waveform multiplied many times and each one of the voices is slightly detuned and spread out from one another. This results in a very strange yet lovely combed, filtery, phasey, chorusty, flangery. Stop. So here's our saw voices up. Whoa. This is one of the instances where I actually like to leave random phase on because if you hear, if you take it off, you get that instant phase sound, whereas with it on random, you don't have it, it's much nicer. You can adjust how detuned they are here. So 20% is probably a pretty good place between 20 and 25, usually for me. Not quite enough down here. Getting a little bit like killed by the bees vibes up here. Next, we're gonna track on a square wave. So back to basic shapes, hit up our square. This one I will turn random phase off and we're going to turn this one down two octaves. Whoa, we're actually also gonna turn this one up one octave. Lastly, we're gonna chuck on a sine wave. Basic shapes once more, sine wave, and this one's gonna go up two octaves. Quite a mixture of pitches here. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the volume of oscillator three down, and we're gonna send FM into number two. FM from three, round about here is pretty good. Oh, beautiful. So that sounds like utter garbage at the moment, but you gotta trust me, it's gonna sound pretty cool later on. We need lots and lots of post processing and effects. Ugh. Turn down the level here and turn down the level here. Create an interesting LFO, something a bit like that. Speed up the amount. Send this over to levels, all of our levels. So not all of them, these two. This one won't be on. And LFO also onto FM. Have FM down and we're gonna turn it up just a touch, probably around there somewhere. Let's have a listen now. Cool. So we can turn this into a bit more of a plucky lead sound by moving this here. Or we could have it a bit more full sounding. We'll start with the pluck for today. Next, effects. It wouldn't be effects time if it wasn't distortion time. So let's chuck on our distortion. We are once again going to add the same LFO onto drive. I like having the drive move around a little bit. Cool. Next, we're gonna put on our compressor. Multiband is good, but I don't need this much. Far too much. Let's chuck it down here. Lovely. Next, the reverb. Too much wetness for here. Yep, that sounds nice to me. Just a little touch. You could also do something interesting, bring it up and have the LFO actually turn it down. So this sound, I think I will keep it that reverb on because this is a bit more that trappy style type lead. Very, very naughty. Let's listen to this with the track. Uh, here's some notes that I made earlier. Just simple stuff. Have a listen with the drums. I actually preferred an octave up, so we'll press Command A, Shift up to move them up an octave. Yeah, I'm into that. Let's go back down an octave now and we'll go from being a bit more of a lead bass into more of a bassy, bassy lead bass. 
if you catch what I am throwing. Something I like playing around with a lot is comb filtering. It's a very, very weird and metallic sound. Filter on, change the type down to comb plus. You already hear it's giving it that very peculiar, it's like a resonant harmonic sound. I'm actually going to chuck that back up an octave because I still like it sounding a little bit more high pitch. That's pretty dirty. I think you do something pretty cool with that. I'm going to save that preset for later. Something very cool about this knob here is key tracking. So if you move around your comb filter, you can find some very, very naughty spots. There, I like that. When you change key, however, you're not having the same impact per note because each note has a unique frequency. But what we can do here is put on key tracking and then find that note again, right here. Now, when I press a different note, it moves and you keep the same characteristic. Mm, yeah. So playing around with the LFO here is going to open up the voice for longer and add more FM in over time. So now we're starting to get that kind of bass house vibe. Thanks. Last thing I want to show you guys, which sometimes can be really cool and sometimes can be not cool at all, but you never know. So we're going to play around with opening up the levels a bit here. Over time, move this one. So we're adding an extra level of harmonics. We're adding... Let's chuck it in in certain places. Yeah, so we're getting a little bit of neither coming in. Bring that weight back in. Because we're getting a bit more bass in that one, I probably will filter off a bit of the top there. That, to me, is a really good place to start a track. What I would do now is I'll probably redo some of the notes, make it a bit more interesting, have some other variations of that sound evolving over time, do some verses, do some intros, do some build-ups. You done EDM, mate. Easy peasy. All righty, guys. That's it for me, Alex Subhuman with United Pop Melbourne, and I'll catch you in the next one.